Amen. 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 <laughs> or Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. At least you're prepared. <laughs> Amen. That's just, that's just as good. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I shouldn't be laughing. It's okay. Somebody pass him a Bible. <laughs> Amen. Who do you roll the ball to? Amen. Amen. All right. I think that's everybody. So it's my turn. Okay. Uh, mine's coming from Galatians 3.11. It says, but that no man is, it? but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Amen. Uh, roll the ball to Pastor Harness. <laughs> uh, Galatians, right? Yeah. Galatians. Amen. Amen. That's everyone. All right. So now that we're done with our memory verses, what's next on the schedule? Oh, real church service. Okay. <laughs> oh, teaching. Okay. So first, in order to start off service, we're going to have a Preacher Romero to come forth and give us his teaching for today. Amen. 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 So today I will be teaching on the doctrine of salvation. And uh, for those who don't know me, my name is uh, Preacher Omo Martinez. Uh, and I grew up in a Christian hope. And I, one question I always wondered is, uh, what are just four big steps to salvation? And today I will be uh, teaching those four things. And yeah, so... My first point will be we are all sinners. My second point will be that the penalty of sin is death and health and hell. 
Uh, my third point will be that Jesus paid for the penalty for your sin on the cross. And finally, that if you repent of your sins and believe and receive Jesus Christ in your heart, you will be saved. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you this day giving thanks that you uh, brought me here with well-being, Lord. I pray for all that may still be coming, Lord. I pray for those who just uh, just to uh, open everyone's heart, Lord, and uh, help them lear learn from my teaching, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so for our first verse, we'll be going to Romans 3.23. And when you get there, please say a hearty amen. 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 All right, so. All right, so it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In this verse, we see that uh, no matter who the person is or uh, who they are, they have sinned against God and his commandments. Uh, I know that we can admit that we have all lied, uh, stolen, or whatever you have, you have sinned against God and his commandments. Now, we all see that in this verse, it says, come short of the glory of God, meaning that God is above us and above all names, which brings me to my next point. Oh, my first point was we are all sinners. My second point is the penalty of sin is death and hell. Romans 6.23, let us all go there as well. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because we sin, we had to pay for our sin, and the price is for, sin, for our sin was death. And that is the price we simply cannot pay. But as we go on in this verse, we see that God gave us a gift, the greatest gift that we can ever, ever receive, eternal life. In heaven, through his son, Jesus Christ. You may ask, how did Jesus pay for our sins? And this will bring us to our next point. Jesus paid for, your, for the penalty for your sin on the cross. This will take us to Romans 5, 8. It said, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This, uh, so God showed his love for us, sending his son, Jesus Christ, and letting him die for us. Um, so through, even though uh, we all sinned and we all were unrighteous, uh, God still loved us enough to send his son to die on the cross for us. Uh, now you may ask, how can I receive this gift? And that takes us to my last point. If you repent for your sins believe that, and believe that Jesus Christ rose from death, you will be saved. Ro that takes us to Romans 9, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Sorry. And there it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and that shalt, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, the, thou shalt be saved. So to be saved, you have to confess your own, in your words that Jesus Christ raised from death and you will be saved. And then I have Romans 10, 13, which says, call, oh, let me see, let me go there. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, uh, in conclusion, in this teaching, I went over the doctrine of salvation and four important steps to salvation. And uh, let us bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, I give thanks, Lord, for just uh, letting me be up here, Lord. I pray that uh, people may have learned, Lord, and that... Uh, uh, whatever I said, Lord, was in your word and not mine, Lord. I pray that you may just just uh, continue to uh, bless this church, Lord, and to use uh, to keep, continue using me, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Amen. I appreciate that uh, Romero, preacher Romero, and praise God in this church we train preachers and uh, the first hurdle that, they, that you need to overcome is fear in facing people behind this pulpit. Uh, this, uh, this, this place is uh, uh, a kind of a scary place to be in, especially for new preachers. And I really appreciate uh, the fact that even uh, preacher Humero was willing to encounter that fear. Amen. And please pray for him as we train more preachers in this ministry. Okay, let's now begin our services. I'd like to call our uh, worship leader and also our song leader to please come as we begin our worship service tonight. Amen. Good evening. We could all have you all stand as we begin our welcoming songs. Amen. All together now. Though the angry surges roll on my tempest riven soul, I am peaceful for I know. Only though the winds may blow, I am an safe and sure that can evermore endure and it holds my anchor holds blow your wildest and old gale on my bars so small and frail my place I shall not fail for my anchor Says I, still I said the tempest shot for my end could grip the rock, and it holds my anchor holds. Though your wild is set on kale, though my bars is small and frail, by his grace I cannot fail. For my end. Till the storm passes by all together in the dark of the midnight have I all hid my face while the storm howls upon me and there's no hiding place hit a crash shall the thunder crash is Lord hear my cry keep me safe so passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky only best let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe Till the soul passes by. 
Uh, let me hear the ladies on this verse. Let us go. Men this time, men in the land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. All together on the chorus, till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever. Preacher Brian, please open us in a word of prayer. Please remain standing as I call Pastor Hermes. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> Amen. Are you happy tonight? Yeah. Praise God for the victory this, this morning. We, had, we heard a wonderful message. Amen. What a blessing it was to hear uh, Pastor Dimver, uh, you know, preach to us this morning. Praise God for that. All of us, uh, were, uh, all of us were touched by the message. And I believe there were two souls who have been dealt with this morning as well. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe I believe God, one got saved, and, and I believe both of them got saved, and we had two a baptism. It's wonderful to see you here. Your sisters are sick, right? Amen. Please, okay, please pray for the, the triplets, though only one of the triplets is here. Praise God for him. Uh, I, was, I was on the phone yet last night, and somebody rang, and, and somebody called the office phone, so I answered it, and it was... Uh, her sister telling me, you know, Pastor, I'm sorry I can't be there in church because I'm sick. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. You know, I mean, I really appreciate them for calling. And I said, we'll be praying for you. And, uh, and, and she said she will try to be here, but praise God, this is here. So please pray for these three, three tri triplets. And they love the Lord. It's wonderful. These, are, these uh, triplets actually are, are the fruits of our daily education Bible school this year. And uh, praise God for that. Well, uh, I had a uh, short meeting with our missions task force. Let, it, let me just share with you what you met, uh, the, the, uh, the issues that we dealt with this, after, this morning after the service. Uh, the missions task force will be the one in charge of our missions conference uh, next month. Okay, our conference will be October 29th to 31st. And then on June the, on June the 2nd, on November the 2nd, the Sunday, okay, the next Sunday will be our Missions Conference Sunday. And again, we will be having International Sunday. Okay, so we'll be uh, attired in uh, international clothing, okay, or attires, okay, so representing different countries. So please uh, remember that. And uh, we, are in, we are expecting uh, pastors and missionaries to attend. And we're going to have services in the evenings from Wednesday, Tuesdays, and Fridays. And uh, we have uh, uh, appointed uh, uh, people to uh, be part of our uh, task forces. We have, now we have how many task forces? Six, six missions task forces. We kind of divided our missions task force into six groups. Uh, in the Philippines, we have three task forces. We have the Luzon Mission Task Force, the uh, Visayan Mission Task Force, and also we have the Mindanao Mission Task Force. That is, of course, representing 
uh, the almost 70 congregations in, in 70 uh, IBBC congregations in the Philippines. So please pray for that. And their, design, their target is to be able to raise uh, $300 each task force. So be, within this, these three task forces, they have to uh, raise $900 a month to support these ministries or the new ministries, the new churches that will be started. In the Philippines uh, right now, we are starting two congregations, uh, IBBC uh, Mexico in Pampanga, not Mexico country. So IBBC Mexico Pampanga, and we also, we, we also started IBBC the Maguete City in, in Negros. So two works. When I go to the Philippines, we'll be starting about three or four more congregations in Negros. We also have uh, the, uh, the fourth task force is going to be the Asia Task Force. That's covering, of course, our IBC Thailand. And of course, we have uh, India. What else? Cambodia, Bangladesh. Uh, and so um, these, uh, the task force in Asia will have to also raise money in order to support our congregations in these nations. And IBBC North, uh, North America, which covers Canada, we have three congregations there, uh, IBC Montreal, IBC Toronto, and IBC Vancouver. I will be going to Montreal this coming Sunday to speak during their anniversary, so please pray for that. Again, they, was, they also need to uh, raise funds to support our work in North uh, America. And then, of course, now we have uh, uh, works in Europe, IBBC Southampton, England, and IBBC Paris, which only started two weeks ago. Uh, it will also be under our European task force. So please pray for these people. Uh, not only that they will be raising funds and money uh, to be able to help the works there, but uh, that means they will uh, be uh, asking our people to uh, support these missionary endeavors through our mission uh, fund or mission giving, uh, either faith promise mission giving or, or increased giving or love offering. And so we'll be raising support uh, during our missions conference. So please pray for that. Okay. And at the same time, we also have missionaries outside of the International Bible Baptist Church that we're supporting. We're supporting missionaries in Taiwan, missionaries in, uh, in China, missionaries in Cambodia, missionaries in Mexico, and of course, uh, a part of Asia. And so uh, we have, we're supporting not only IBC congregations, but also missionaries out of our congregations, out of our, our ministries. So far, uh, I believe this year, we are shooting uh, to reach 100 congregations, 100 IBBC congregations all over the world. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? Okay, 100 congregations all over the world. Right now, we have 98. That means when I go to the Philippines, when you start two more, that means we will, we will reach the 100 congregations of the International Bible Baptist Church and Ministries. And please pray, Preacher uh, John Paul. I'm, I'm, pretty sh I'm not sure if he's joining us again, but this morning he joined us from Turkey. And he went to Turkey for an assignment with the Air Force and uh, received a text from him this morning. and said, Pastor, I'm watching our services today. And so praise God for that. Praise God that we are live and people can reach us. People can listen to us. People can watch our services. There are many people watching us, not only in the Middle East, but also in Asia, and also in Canada, also in Europe, and also in the Philippines. So I'd like to welcome all those watching us tonight. And don't forget also our uh, radio broadcast every Sunday at KFAX 1100 at 9 o'clock in season broadcast. And uh, I'm going to start now a series of messages, a series of lessons uh, beginning next month. I'm going to start recording. I appreciate uh, uh, Jordan of uh, fixing the, uh, uh, the microphone so that I can be able to uh, make some recording in my own uh, computer okay, uh, during this time so I can be able to preach a series of messages that we will be featuring in our in-season broadcast every Sunday at 9 o'clock. Encourage people you know, that you're reaching out with the gospel at the same time that you're that you are discipling to listen to it, okay? And we are going to also promise to uh, give them a copy of our discipleship program and uh, any books they would like to, to have, okay, through our uh, radio broadcast ministries. And ever since last, last Wednesday, we've been having missionaries, amen? Last Wednesday, we had the missionary 
that will be going to Honduras. Remember his name? What, what, what was his name? Petro. Petro. He said F or P. Petro. Okay, missionary, missionary of Petro, missionary to Honduras. Okay? And then uh, this morning, we have a, a pastor from the Philippines, from Agayan de Oro, uh, a good friend of mine, Pastor Denver Andales. And tonight, we have another missionary. Okay, apparently he, he spoke to Pastor Julius when I was gone. Okay, and when did you talk to Pastor Julius, brother? Uh, two, months two months ago. Okay, and praise God is here with us. And uh, he will be presenting to us his, uh, also his, his need and share with us, of course, and also uh, uh, introduce uh, to his family. But I'll go ahead and, and uh, present him to you, at least recognize him to you. We have uh, the... Kabuntala for Cebu, Philippines. Would you please stand? Missionary Kabuntala and his wife. Okay, amen. Uh, three kids. We have Dave. Dave is the father. He, missionary, right? And then you're October. I'm also October. No wonder you're good looking. <laughs> okay, and then Angel. You, that must be your wife, okay? And by the way, uh, Dave is... Uh, are you a pure Filipino? Okay, okay, pure... A Filipino background, but born here in the U.S. And how about how about Angel? Okay, part Spanish. Okay, great. And we have Thai or T Y or Thai. Who's who's Thai? Hello, Thai. How you doing? Okay. And we have Jay. Jay, there you go. Okay, how old are you, Thai? Ten years old. And Jay. Seven. Okay, and then Kai must be in the nursery, and A. So please welcome them. Welcome them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, IABC is a mission-minded church. Amen? Amen. And we always love to listen to missionaries and uh, and as they share their mission fields with us. At the same time, bless us with uh, a wonderful challenge. Uh, let us now. Let's all stand, please, as we welcome each other. And also, praise God, uh, Brother Rico is here tonight as well. God bless you. Thank you for coming. A shelter in the time of storm. The Lord's our rock and Him. A shelter in the time of storm. Thank you. Oh, Jesus is the rock. Man, go around and sell somebody high. Cover us together now. Oh, Jesus is the rock and a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is the rock and a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Please be seated. It's wonderful to see Chinky Castillo here tonight. You know, we prayed for you, Chinky. Glad you're, you're better. I know she was hospitalized. And praise God for Raymond being here with us. Okay, God bless you. All right? God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Amen. 
Now we move on to the next portion of our evening service, which is special number, which will come from the Martinez family. Amen. Amen. And praise God for that wonderful special number by the Martinez family. Amen. Now we move on to the next portion of our service, which is the offering. As so I call two ushers to the front and ask that we all please stand. If I can get Missionary Sims to please pray for our offering.
Amen. Let's sing cheerful giving. All together now. I obey you, Lord, the master of my soul, yielding my will with my tithes and all, forsaking self. Follow your command and obey you, Lord, and obey you, Lord. I honor you, my King, my deliverer. Across you bore your blood and eternal life. Accept my gift to lift your name up to the world. Let us increase. I honor you, my loving Father. Thank you for the things you do. The love you show, your grace and your mercy too. I offer you the first fruits of my labor to thank you, to thank you. I worship you, my God, O oh Lord, I praise you. I magnify your name, express my love for you with my life and all I sacrifice for you. I worship you, I worship you. Amen. Remain standing as we go to our Bible pledge. Amen. Ready? Begin. This is my Bible. It is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It tells me who I am, what I can become, and where I am going. It renews my mind, changes my heart, and refreshes my soul. It is my daily bread. By faith, I'll believe its promises, obey its commandments, and honor its principles in my life. With the Bible as my guide, I will walk by faith and not by sight. Please remain standing as I call Pastor Hermes. You can please be seated. You know, tonight we are competing with... Uh, uh, a famous church here in the U.S., the ball game, right? You know, I think the, the game started around 5.30. And uh, praise God for your presence, amen? Instead of going there and uh, uh, worshiping the ball, at least you're worshiping God here in this church. And praise God for that. And uh, what an opportunity it is for us to gather together together and worship and praise God and thank Him for all His wonderful benefits upon us. Uh, uh, for some reason, the Lord has been uh, sending us missionaries, maybe uh, to remind us of, our, of the opportunities that he has for us, amen, uh, being close to our missions conference. Uh, this is a wonderful thing for us to be able to uh, uh, be shared with the works of the Lord all over, all, all over the whole world, coming from uh, our, we have first-term missionaries like uh, our speaker tonight, and we have a veteran pastor just like this morning, and also a new missionary to Honduras last Wednesday. So praise God for that. And so this time I'd like to call now. Uh, this is the first I've met him, but he, his sending church is uh, Harvest Baptist Church in Daly City. I know his pastor, Pastor Win Pachardo. Pastor Win Pachardo actually is the uh, first cousin of, uh, I, uh, of the pastor of IBBC in Falls Church, Virginia, Pastor Jericho Tumang. Okay, that's why he's, uh, he is also kind of related to uh, IBC. And Pastor Stillman's Church, IABC, uh, North Virginia, is now an independent ministry. We uh, organized this ministry about uh, three or four years ago. And so uh, uh, he is uh, going to Cebu, okay? And I I will, he will be sharing with, that, with us uh, the, work, the work that God is giving to him in Cebu and also his family. And also uh, he will give, be giving the challenge for us tonight. So let's do, now welcome a missionary Kabuntala, Dave Kabuntala, would you please come? First of all, I just want to say thank you, Pastor Hernandez, for giving me this privilege, this opportunity. I'm uh, uh, honored and humbled that uh, he gave me the privilege to come here. Uh, I met Pastor Julius over in Riverside 
over at Pastor Nolasco's church, and he mentioned to me that, uh, you know, we would like for you to come to our church uh, here in San Leandro. Since I live in the Bay Area, I live in San Francisco. I was born and raised there. So I spoke to uh, Pastor Julius uh, a few weeks ago, and he told me that, uh, you know, we want you to come. And uh, I was in the area, so I'm, I'm, I said, I figured, you know, I'm just going to come by and drop in and meet Pastor and uh, see the church and see the work here. And it's just amazing what the... Uh, the, uh, the Bonte family uh, has done for, for not only the Philippines, but for here in America and all over the world. I mean, the great work they have done there, and they've been such a, a blessing, um, you know, a great God, a God of men, and I, was, I had the privilege to uh, meet Pastor Benny Bonte in the Philippines last February. Uh, I was there for a missions conference, the Worldwide Missions, and that was a great uh, blessing. I, I want to share a, a blessing that happened at that conference. It was... Um, before I left there to, uh, to Manila, you know, my wife and I, you know, I, ha I had uh, just recently got laid off and, um, you know, we just had a new baby and, uh, you know, we didn't have insurance. So, you know, we had to apply for uh, Medi-Cal and everything. And, and my wife had this uh, condition. Um, she had something, uh, or her, her uh, uterus was inflamed and, and she had a fibroid and, and it was really giving her a, a lot of pain. So, you know, she went to go see her doctor, and the doctor said that, you know, we, uh, we don't cover that type of procedure. So my wife and I were, you know, were kind of stressed about it, and we prayed, you know, the Lord will take care of that. You know, we'll pray. And uh, the week after that, we, I, we left to the Philippines. So anyway, it was our, our second week there. We were at the mission conference, and Pastor Benny Abanti was preaching. And it was the first time I've met Pastor Benny, and I mean, this guy, you look at him, I mean, you would think this guy is int intimidating, you know, the way he looks, he has his goatee, and, you know, and I was like, wow, that man, this, uh, that's, uh, that's a serious pastor right there, amen, and he, but he preached a convicting message, and after the message, he uh, challenged the people. He said, I challenge you, because he wanted to take an offering for the missionaries, he goes, I challenge each and, every, each and every one of you to open up your wallet, and you give the largest amount you have in your wallet, and you put it in the offering plate. So I said, okay. So I opened my wallet, and I forgot. I had a, I had a $100 bill in there. I forgot to exchange it to pesos. <laughs> I was like, oh, why didn't I exchange it to pesos? I got a $100 bill in there. And, and I, was, I was fighting with the Lord. I said, Lord, no. I got one more week here in Manila. This is all I have. I'm in a budget. How am I going to survive? But uh, the Lord put it in my heart, you know, just give it. Prove me now. Prove me. So I took it and put it in that plate. Well, anyway, the Lord, it's amazing how the Lord blesses. You know, that day, you know, the pastor took us out to dinner, so I didn't have to pay money for dinner. And then, and then he said, oh, you know what, you could stay here in our, in our church. We have a, a chamber here for you to stay, so I, we didn't have to pay money for, for the room. And then the next, uh, next day, people were treating us out to dinner, lunch. I was like, wow, you know, the blessings is already coming. And uh, Pastor Bonte said, if God doesn't bless you within a month, you call me, and I'll give you your money back. So I was like, the blessings are coming. I was like, amen, amen. So the week after that, we were in Manila. We were ready to go, and uh, my wife calls me. And, uh, you know, I was telling her, I said, oh, babe, it's amazing, you know, what God has done. And, you know, I, I gave my money, and these, all these blessings are happening. And then she goes, you know what? You won't believe this, but my doctor called me, and she told me that she's going to uh, perform this surgery for free. Amen. Amen. Could you imagine? I mean, this surgery would have cost us thousands of dollars. Yeah. But just because I went, I stepped out by faith and gave, the Lord is blessed. You can never outgive God, amen? amen. So it just proves to you, it just proves to God that God is always going to give back, amen? And you're having this faith promise. I mean, if you give by faith, if you support these missionaries, God, that's, God will bless you. It talks about how he'll pour out the blessing that you can't even contain it, amen? So I, I, I challenge you. I challenge the same challenge uh, the pastor of said. Just give. Just give by faith. You know, as Christians, we live by faith, but not by sight, Amen. So I just want to thank you again, Pastor Bonte, for giving me this honor and this privilege to uh, come and preach in your, in your wonderful church. And uh, if you have your Bibles with you, or actually, could, do we show the video first? Okay, could we uh, show the video first, please? Cebu, Philippines. Cebu is home to about 4 million people, 30% of which are younger than 10 years old. Cebu is 70 to 85% Roman Catholic, 
11.6 Evangelical Christian, and about 5% Muslim. Although Cebu is a beautiful island nation in the Philippines, it has had its share of natural disasters in recent years. In 2012, an earthquake of 7.1 magnitude struck and destroyed Cebu's natural beauty. The following year, a 6.7 magnitude earthquake struck again, killing hundreds. Even with the natural disasters in Cebu, a bigger problem surrounds the Cebuano people. In the third week of January of every year, the people of Cebu celebrate an idol through a festival called Sinulo. During this fiesta, people worship, party, and drink to their false idol. There are many things the people of Cebu are in need of. However, their greatest need lie in their spiritual life. My name is Brother Dave Kabontala, and this is my family. And we, we are, are missionaries, missionaries to Cebu, Cebu Philippines. Philippines. Hello, my name is Brother Dave Kabontala. In 1999, I received the greatest gift that I could ever receive, and that was a gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. When I received this gift was when I was first introduced to my wife's mother. And during this visit, she opened up the Bible and shared the gospel to me. And it was there that I realized that I needed a savior. So I bowed my head and closed my eyes and I prayed and I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Shortly after that, I attended an independent fundamental Baptist church that my wife was attending. And it was there that I was baptized and I joined that very day. As a young child, my mother taught me about God and his great love for me. And I believe that helped me to make the most important decision I'd ever make, to accept the gift of eternal life. At the age of 12, while visiting a friend, two soul winners came to the door and shared the plan of salvation with us. It was then that I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my savior. A year later, my family and I joined a fundamental independent Baptist church where I was baptized and grew in my service to the Lord. In April 2012, the Lord put a strong burden in my heart for the lost people of Cebu, Philippines. But it wasn't until the Lord led my family and I to Harvest Baptist Church under Pastor Wynn Pichardo. And it was there when the Lord put a burden in my heart again, and I finally answered the call and surrendered to the mission field. My husband and I are faithfully serving at Harvest Baptist Church and are involved in various different ministries. My husband is diligently training under Pastor Wen Pichardo, and I am following along in his calling. We are very excited to get on the field and start sharing the gospel and discipling the Cebuano people. Hello, my name is Pastor Wen, pastor of Harvest Baptist Church here in Daly City, California. It is my joy and privilege to recommend Cabuntala family as your missionaries to the islands of Cebu. They uh, surrendered last year during our missions conference, but uh, they've been serving the Lord in different ministries. Brother Dave is one of our staff, teaches uh, Sunday school, also care home ministries and junior church. They're soul winners and they have a great heart. And I believe God will use them tremendously in the Philippines. And I uh, pray that you would consider them in your missions program. Thank you. My goal is to get on the field as soon as possible and start an independent, fundamental Baptist church. Discipling new converts. Training nationals. Deflecting. We have two requests. We ask you to pray for our future ministry. We believe through faith and prayer that God will provide, protect, and put us on our mission field. Secondly, we ask for your financial support. God's work is always done by God's people. By your giving, we are able to go and reach the lost souls of Cebu.
Okay, if you have your Bibles with you, could you please turn to the book of Jude? The book of Jude. And we will be reading verses 3 and 4. Book of Jude, verses 3 and 4. So if you find your place, could you please say amen? Amen. Amen. Could you please stand for the reading of God's word? I'll read verse 3, and we'll read verse 4 together. The Bible says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for today, Lord. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation. Thank you for this church, Lord, and for the pastor, Lord. Thank you for the members who are here and the visitors, Lord. I ask you, Lord, that you would just be with me tonight, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would just empty myself out, Lord, and fill me with the Holy Spirit, Lord. I ask you, Lord, that I would be able to uh, present your word, Lord. May it be a A word of encouragement, Lord, a challenge to your people tonight, Lord. I ask, Lord, that they would uh, open their eyes eyes and their ears to your word, Lord. And I ask that you would just continue to bless the service, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So I would like to title tonight's message, Contend for the Faith. You guys can be seated. Contend for the Faith. You see, the epistle of Jude is one of the shortest books in the Bible. It only has 25 verses, but is full with mighty words. You see here in verse 3, Jude felt the need to write this letter to the church, warning them about ungodly men creeping into the church. So Jude here was addressing God's people, that we should earnestly contend for the faith. You see, the word earnestly means eagerly, with real desire, and contend means fight. You see, what Jude is saying here is that we should fight for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Not for our faith, but for the faith. That is for the word of God, for the holy scriptures. You see, as believers, we are to proclaim, to protect, and to preserve the true word of God. To earnestly contend for the faith. See, we are to defend and to fight against all assaults and all attacks that come against the word of God. To contend for the faith. To fight. For the faith. You know, when I hear the word fight, I think about boxing. How many of you here like boxing? I love boxing. You know, we just saw the Mayweather fight last night. Oh, man. I wish that guy would have lost. <laughs> but I love boxing. You know, growing up as a kid, you know, I love boxing. When I was growing up in the 80s, it was uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. And then it was De La Hoya and Mike Tyson and, and uh, all these great fighters. And then now, currently, you know, it's, it's uh, Manny Pacquiao, amen? And uh, Manny Pacquiao is, uh, you know, Maybe one of the greatest fighters right now of all time. And, uh, you know, in boxing, I remember watching the last fight of uh, Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley. How many of you guys, you remember that fight against Timothy Bradley? Okay. Well, you know, there's, before that big fight, there was a, there's this show called the HBO Face-Off with Max Kellerman. And what he would do is he would, he would take each boxer and they would come together and they would sit in this small table and they would, you know, sit down and they would just stare each other down, you know. And they would say, why I could beat you. And, uh, and you know, Manny, you know, Manny just suffered a, a great loss when, uh, against Manuel Lopez. You know, he got knocked out. So everybody thought that Manny's uh, career was done. You know, he said, Manny's done. He says his, his career is over. He doesn't have the desire to fight. He's no longer the same man. So here, as they were looking at each other, Bradley had the boldness to go up to Pacquiao and said, you know, Manny, you're not going to win. I could beat you. And uh, Max Kellerman goes, why? Well, because he no longer has a fire. He, doesn't, he no longer has that desire to fight anymore. And then, you know, Manny, he's a cool, you know, humble guy. And he looks at Bradley and goes, okay, okay, we'll see, we'll see. And, uh, you know, Manny, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a Christian now. So, you know what Manny said? He goes, you know what? I'm going to pray to God to give me that fire back. Amen. You see, when you're, when you're a boxer, you need, to be, you need to always be ready, ready to stand your ground, ready to fight, ready to contend. Because there's always going to be a contender that's ready to take you off the, the, the top of the top of the game, that's ready to knock you out, ready to take you off from the number one spot. 
You see, that's why you need to be ready to stand and to defend your title. And we all saw what happened that, uh, at the end of that fight, right? And new champion of the world, Manny Pacquiao, amen? You see, Manny proved that he, he still had that fire. He still had the desire to contend. He had that, 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 that fire to fight, amen? And you know what? As Christians, we were all in a fight. We were all in a fight right now. You know what we're fighting for? We are fighting for the faith. We are fighting for the truth. We are fighting for the word of God, amen? And that's why we need to pray to God that he would give us that same fire, that same desire to earnestly contend for the faith. You see, we need to be ready to take a stand, you know, ready to stand our ground, ready to defend and fight for the word of God. You see, this letter that Jude wrote thousands of years ago is just as relevant today as it was at the time he wrote it. Here in verse 3, Jude here was making a plea. He was, he was saying it with great urgency. He said, Beloved, it is needful for me to write unto you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. In verse 4 it says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see here, Jude was expressing the need why we should fight for the faith. Here in verse number 4, the Bible says that there will be people turning the grace of our Lord God into lasciviousness. You see, the word lascivious means lewdness, meaning lustful desires, you know, desires of the flesh. In verse 7, it says here, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. You see, there are people that's doing that today, you know, giving themselves to fornication, you know, going after strange flesh. You know, many people will take the grace of God as an excuse to sin. You see, there are some, they will, they will pervert God's word. They will take the grace of God to justify their own lifestyle. You know, they will say that God is a loving God. God's grace is so wonderful, he won't condemn us. But the ones who contend for the faith will always be mindful of what the grace of God truly teaches. You see here, could you please turn your Bibles to Titus? Titus chapter 2. And we'll be reading verses 11 and 12. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. You see here, the Bible says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live our lives soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You see, God is telling us that we should deny ungodliness and that we should live our lives soberly and righteously in this present world. You know, it's such a big issue right now, you know, when we turn on the news and, and this thing about the same-sex marriage, how, how they're trying to legalize the same-sex marriage. You know, right now, here in America, there are 19 states where they perform same-sex marriage. Could you believe that? 19 states here in America was founded under, under biblical principles. You know, that's wrong. The Bible said that's wrong. But then they like to argue and say that, well, God loves everybody. God loves everybody. You know what? That's true. And Romans 5.8 says, but God commanded his love towards us, that in that way we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. God loves the sinner, but God still hates the sin, amen? You see, the Bible says that a marriage is between a man and a woman. You know, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. You know, sin is still sin in God's eyes. You see, the world will always twist and pervert God's word. You see, God says to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, but to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, amen? You know, you young people right now, I mean, you know, you have a, a great church here. You, you come here preaching, you know, pastor here is preaching the word of God. He's contending for the faith. He's telling you how you should live your life and this and that. You know, don't, don't, don't fall for the worldly things, amen? Every time, every time you put those, those headphones in your ear and you listen to that rap music and stuff like that, you know what you're doing? You listen to the devil's sermons when you do that, amen? You need to come to church and start listening to preaching, amen? Some truth, amen? So that way you know how to live your life. You see, God says to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. In verse number 4, the Bible also says that there will be people denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? We see that on the in our world today. You see that. You know, that's why they have all these different religions. You know, they have the Hindus. 
They have the Buddhists. You know, they have the Muslims. They have the Mormons. And they even have the, the uh, Jehovah's false witnesses. You know, all denying the deity of our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, back in Daly City where I stay, you know, we have a sign in our front lawn. And it says, Jesus is the answer. Jesus, and, and we're, right, right, we're right where a bus stop is, so everyone sees it. And, you know, we have a few Muslims that live in the area. And I one, I one time I was washing the dishes, and I was looking at the window, and they were pointing at the sign and, you know, looking all upset about it. And I was like, wow. You know, man, there are people that, don't, that are denying the Lord Jesus. And um, there was one time there was this uh, elderly man, a Filipino man, and he came by, and he started knocking on my door. So I answered the door. I said, you know, how you doing, sir? He said, yeah, I seen your sign out there. So you believe in Jesus? I'm all, yes, sir. I said, I'm a Christian. Yes, I do. I believe in Jesus. And then uh, he said, well, you know what? Uh, can, I, can I invite you to my church? And he gives me a track. And uh, he's part of uh, Iglesia de Cristo. And I was like, oh, I see. Okay, I know, I know, I know you guys. And then I got my track. I said, well, you know what? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a member at Harvest Baptist Church. Here's my track. And I gave it to him. And, uh, you know, and then we, you know, we began talking, you know, about the Bible and about about uh, God and Jesus, and then, you know, I said, you know what, let me try to witness to this man, maybe I could, I could uh, shine some light, you know, and uh, so I said, sir, I said, do you know if you're going to heaven? And he said, well, yes, and I said, how? And I said, because of God. I said, well, you know what, the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ and him alone. And the Bible says that I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man coming to the Father but by him, which is Jesus Christ. And uh, he was like, no, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. He goes, Jesus is not a, he goes, Jesus is not God. He's just a unique man. He's a special man. He's not God, but he's a unique man. I said, okay, really? So I got my Bible, and, you know, I started quoting verses. You know, I said, well, John, John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And then I, and he said, okay, well, uh, you know, I don't believe that. Okay, well, how about John uh, 1, 14 says, and the Word was made flesh, meaning Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus was made in the flesh. And then he said, well, no, I don't believe that. Okay, I said, how about John 10, verse 30? It says, I and my Father are one. Uh, I don't believe that. I said, well, how about four, uh, John 14, verse 9? He that seen me has seen the Father. And he's like, I don't believe that. You know what he was doing? He was denying the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. We went back and forth, back and forth, and he was denying the Lord Jesus. Amen? But the Bible says that Jesus is our Lord. He is the Lord of lords and the kings of kings. Amen? You see? You will see that people will try to discredit, well, they'll, they'll try to denounce, and they'll try to deny the word of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why we are, it is so important that we need to be ready to protect and to defend the word of God. And how do we do that? We do it, we do it by knowing God's word. Amen? By knowing the Holy Scriptures. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, And all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You see, God has given us all scripture to use so that way we could, uh, we could contend for the faith. He said it, it, is, it, is, profitable for insp it is uh profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, and instruction. You see, first, Jude here expresses the need why we should contend for the faith. And secondly here, Jude tells us how, how to contend for the faith. Here in verse 20 it says, But ye, beloved, building up yourself in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Ghost. So in order for us to contend for the faith, we must first build ourselves up in the holy faith. It's by reading the Bible, getting in God's word, meditating in his word, amen, and also pray pray. You see, by doing that is we need to study and meditate in his word day and night and also by prayer because there is power in prayer, amen? Without, without prayer, there is no power. But when you pray, there is power in prayer. In Ephesians 6, verse 10 and 11, the Bible says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in power of his might. And then verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. You see here in Ephesians 6, verse 13 and 18 here, God has equipped us with the weapons and the protection that we need to contend for the faith. See, he has given us the full armor of God, the whole armor of God. You see, first we need to be girded with the truth. And then we have to have one, the breastplate of righteousness. 
and our feet sawed with the gospel of peace, holding up the shield of faith, putting on the helmet of our salvation, and grasping the sword of the Holy Spirit, which is the God of word. Amen. And the Bible says that the Bible is like a two-edged sword. Amen. So whenever we're out there contending for the faith, we need to know about, we need to know God's word. Amen. We need to have God's word with us. You see, God has given us the elements of truth, of righteousness, of the gospel of faith, of salvation, and the word of God, so we can earnestly contend for the faith. You know, I think about, uh, we went on our missions trip last February. Actually, this February that just passed, we went there for a survey trip. And, uh, you know, we were at this church, and, you know, we uh, went soul winning. It was, a, it was a Saturday morning, and it was my first time in Manila. And, you know, Manila is huge. I mean, it's such a big city. And, uh, you know, and all I did, I just remember, I said, okay, let's go. Everyone said, let's go soul winning. So me and a few of our church members went, and we just hopped on a jeepney, and they just drove. And I was just looking around. I was like, wow, this is nice. You know, wow, look at the buildings and everything. And all of a sudden, we started driving through these uh, slum areas, the squatter area. I was like, what is this? I was like, wow. It was, I mean, the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean, the living conditions was horrible. I mean, it was just a bunch of makeshift house. You know, it looked like a dump. And I was like, wow, this place is, is, is not nice. So, you know, they stop, okay, this is where we're going to go soul winning. And I was like, wow, really? And there was like trash. And then I was looking around, there was dead rats. And I was like, oh, my soul, what is this? So, so what we did is we, you know, we went in there and we just started sharing the gospel, amen? And uh, we were going there handing out tracts and, and trying to get people saved, tell them about Jesus Christ. And, and, uh, and as I was walking, from a distance, I saw eight men sitting down and, and they were drinking. You know, they were drinking. This was, this was early in the morning. And then these guys were drinking um, some, some rum or some uh, thunder wire or something like that. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, I was like, man, the, I don't know what it was, but the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. He said, you need to go and talk to those men. You need to go and share the gospel to those men. And I looked, and it was just trash everywhere. And I was like, okay, okay, Lord, is that what you want me to do? I'll do it. So I was, I was walking through the, the trash and, you know, making sure I don't step on no dead rats. So I was like, oh, oh. And then and finally I, I made it to those men. And, you know, when I got there, I, I introduced myself and I said, you know, I'm here to share the gospel. I said, let me ask you a question. If you were to, if you were to die today, do you know if you'll have a home in heaven? And uh, they couldn't answer me. They're like, no, no. And I said, can I show you? And, and I went through this, uh, the plan of salvation and I asked, all you need to do is you need to trust Jesus as your Savior. I said, are you willing to do that? And they were like, Yes, yes, and they all stood up, and, and they all bowed their head and closed their eyes, and they prayed, and I was just moved with emotion. I mean, I was tearing up, and I was like, wow, Lord, you know, and, and the guy that was uh, with me, he was uh, nudging me. He goes, Dave, he goes, did you see that machete that was underneath that guy's chair? I was like, what? <laughs> wow. You see, I had the full armor of God that day, amen, <laughs> because I heard there was a lot of Muslims living in that area, but you see, whenever you're ready to contend for the faith, the Lord will give you that protection, amen to earnestly contend for the faith. Amen? You see, he's given me the whole armor of God. And, uh, and there was another time we were walking in, um, you know, same, same place, same area. We were walking, and we seen this guy who was uh, very, very well dressed. And we were like, this guy's not from here. And then he was walking around. He, was, he had his little satchel. And then me and this uh, guy named Jace, he's a Bible student. And I, I said, man, I bet you that's a Jehovah's Witness right there. And then we looked at him, and he saw us. And we had our New Testament Bibles in our hand. And he said, you know what, let's go witness to that guy. So we were walking, and we were walking, and this guy kept looking back and walking like this. <laughs> and then he ditched into a house. And uh, my buddy with, uh, that was with me went and started sharing the gospel. And then he said, oh, no, no, I don't know English. You know, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay. And then the guy, another guy was with me, knows Tagalog, so he started sharing the gospel. But he didn't accept. You know, he denied the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what we were doing right there? We were contending. We were making our presence known. We were out there contending for the faith. Amen. You know, there was people out there giving false, false doctrine, giving these people false hope. When we, were, we had our Bibles in our hand, we had our tracts, and we had the gospel, and the power of God, the gospel, you know, changes people's lives, and we were going there sharing the gospel. What we were doing is we were contending for the faith. And that's exactly what happens. Whenever you guys go out there and knock on doors, so in, and share the gospel, you know what you're doing? You are fighting for the faith. Amen? Because there's many people out there that's, that's, that's giving them false hope. But then we have the truth. We have the true word of God. Amen? That's why we should contend for the faith. You see, here in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 says, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
You see, you think about that. It's talking about the gates of hell. You know, gates are designed to keep things in or out. So it talks about the gates of hell. And the Bible says here, not even the gates of hell can not prevail against it. So you think about it, the gates of hell doesn't attack us. But you know what? As a Bible-believing church, we need to go out and attack the gates of hell. Amen? We need to attack the sin that's, selling those, that's sending people to hell. Amen? That's why we need to go out and we need to contend. We need to confront. And we need to convince the lost and the dying world with the truth. Amen? You see, the reason why many people are, are, are on their way to hell is because Christians are no longer contending. Right. They're no longer fighting. Right. You know what they are? They're more content in the faith. Mm -hmm. Instead of contending for the faith, they're just content. They're comfortable. You know, I'm saved. I'm good. You know, I sit here. You know, I'm a saved man. I'm a saved. I'm going to go out there. That's the reason why there's a lost world that's going to hell. Because there's no, one, no, there's no one that's going out there contending for the faith. Amen. You see, the word contend is an action word. You know, it's not for us to just to stand still and, 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 and sit down. No, when you fight, when you contend, you need to go forward. Amen. Amen. You know, we need to be in the offense, not the defense. Mm. You know, just like in sports. You know, it's, it's funny, like today, what uh, Pastor was mentioning about the games right now. You know, they got the Niner game going on this morning with the Raiders. And, uh, you know, it's just funny because these, 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 these uh, sports fans are so, uh, you know, they get pumped up. You know, they represent, you know, I represent the Niners. Yeah. You know, yeah, Raider Nation. Yeah, I'm the Raiders. You know, and they're representing, you know, their team and this and that. And, and they're willing to do anything. They're, you know, they're, willing, they're, they're even willing to fight people over their favorite team. Amen. But you see, just because they're wearing the jersey doesn't mean they're playing for the team. You know, the ones that are playing for the team are the ones that's out on the field, amen, that's doing some work, that's going over there, making some plays, you know, executing the plays, you know, um, getting the game plan done, go over there trying to get a win, amen. You see, that's the same thing how we are sometimes in our Christian life. You know, we get, we get more comfortable. You know, we, resi we represent the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, but a lot of times too many Christians come to church and they're more content, you know, more content in the faith. You know what? When you see those guys sitting on the stands, they think they're part of the team. They're not part of the team. All they are is spectators. Amen. They're just occupying the seat. Amen. All they're doing, they're going, go team. Fight, fight, fight. But they're over there sitting, sitting eating a hot dog and drinking a, their, their, their Diet Coke. Go team. You know, and that's the same thing with us, with Christians. We come to church, and we sit, and we just watch, and we spectate. Just watch everyone. You know, people watch. We don't do nothing. We just sit down and watch. You know what we need to start doing as Christians? We need, to stop, we need to stop being spectators and start being participators, amen? Get involved, amen? Like the, the ones in the, out on the field, they're involved. They're together with the team. They're trying to get a win, amen? And that's, what the, that's the same thing with us as Christians. We're, we're out there to go win souls for the Lord, for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, he that wins souls is wise, amen? So that's why we need to stop being content. We need to start... Start being a uh, participator. Stop being a spectator, but be a participator. Amen. Get involved with the church. Whenever the church, those church doors open, come. Come to church Sunday morning. Come church Sunday night. Come Wednesday night. And whenever there's soul winning, go. Go soul winning. Amen. You see, in Luke 14, verse 23, the Bible says to go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. And thirdly, here in verse 22, Jude tells us the way, the way to contend for the faith. It says here, and it says here, Jude tells us the way to contend for the faith. And it says, and of some have compassion, making a difference. You see, there are times when we go out soul winning. And, you know, we might encounter someone that, that might be rude. You know, someone that might, that might be uh, obnoxious. You know, they'll try to argue with us then you know what? We still have to keep our, our testimony, amen? You know, we need to show compassion. You know, we need to show them love. You know, as Christians, we are supposed to be Christ-like, you know? The lost will be more inclined to listen to us if we approach them with love and compassion. You see, a lot of times, you think about the word compassion. There are a lot of people that pity, that show pity. There's a difference between pity and compassion. Pity is when you just fall... Uh, when, you, when you just feel sorry for somebody. But compassion is when you do something about it. 
Here in verse, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, But sanctify the Lord in your hearts, and ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of hope that is in you, with meekness and in fear. You know, the word meekness means, you know, humility. You know, you need to be humble. And fear means respect. You know, we need to show people respect. You know, I know that uh, a lot of times in the Christian life, we're not, we're not in the physical uh, uh, fight. This is a, more of a spiritual fight, amen? You know, we're trying to win souls to the Lord, amen? So that's why we need to show people that love, that compassion, the same way that Jesus did. You know, when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. You know, Jesus, I mean, he could have easily wiped out those crowds that, that when he was being uh, persecuted and, and being talked to and, 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 and being beat. I mean, he could have took us out. No problem. You know, he could have sent uh, uh, 10,000 angels to destroy us. But no, he showed us, he showed love. He showed love and compassion. There was a quote that Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King made, and he said, Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. You see, love conquers everything. God's love conquered, conquered, conquered sin. Amen. Because it was love. His for, for God so loved the world. Because of his love. Amen. You see, lastly here in verse 24, this is where we see God's enablement. Verse 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You see here in verse 24, this is where we receive God's enablement. He said, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. You know, aren't you glad that we have a God that is able? Amen. He is not a disabled God. He is a God that is able. Amen. It says here, for he, for he that is able to keep you from falling. You see, when we're ready to stand. When we're ready to fight for, for the faith, God will enable us. He'll, he'll sustain us. He'll keep us from falling. He'll keep us in the fight. Amen? He'll help us to persevere. Have you ever heard that saying? If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And that is exactly what's going to happen. If we don't stand for the word of God, if we don't stand for the truth, if we don't stand for the Bible, we will fall for anything. And that's why the world is the way it is right now. Because no, no, there's nobody standing for the truth anymore. Amen. That's why the world is such a mess. You turn on the news, all these wars and, and, and all this perversion that's going on. It's because there was no one standing for the truth. We live in a fallen world. We will fall for anything. That's why as believers we need to stand and fight for the word of God. Why? Why should we stand and fight for the word of God? Because the word of God is worth fighting for. It is worth fighting for. You know, if it wasn't for this book right here, you and I would be on our way to hell. If it wasn't for this book right here, your friends, your, your, your family, your loved ones that has passed on are in heaven today. It is because of this book that your grandfather, your grandmother, your mom, your dad, your children, your grandchildren are saved today. It is it's because of this book that marriages and families are restored. It is because of this book that lives has been changed. And it is this book that why the world has hope. And it is because of this book why we have salvation. Let me ask you this. Why do we have this book today? Why? Because there were Christians who was willing to fight for the faith. Not only were they willing to fight for the faith, they were willing to die for the faith. I think back in the 1500s, there was hundreds of Christians, they were called the, mar the martyrs. I mean, they had such a powerful testimony. You see, these Christians were willing to die and to be burned alive at the stake. Why? For the sake of the faith. Because they stood for the truth. And for that truth, they endured excruciating pain to be burned alive. Why? Because the faith is worth dying for. I mean, could you imagine... We have the word of God. We have the true word of God. We have the King James Bible. Amen. And we're not willing to, to contend and fight for the faith. When there were Christians that was willing to die for the faith. I mean, you, we need to be thankful that we live in a country where we could preach the gospel freely. Amen. Where there's other Christians out there and these other countries that are, real, are being killed for the faith. I mean, you hear that right now. The whole thing with ISIS. I mean, these Christians being beheaded because of the faith. 
And we have the freedom to go out and share the gospel to the world, to your neighbors, to your friends, to your family, to your co-workers, freely. That is why it's so important that we need to stand for the faith. Amen? We need to fight for the faith. You see, they cared. These Christians cared about whether the measures of salvation will be preserved. And they cared about people. And they cared about the glory of God. You see, they were willing to die for this book. See, that shows how precious this book is, how powerful this book is. That's why we need to love this book. We need to get in this book. We need to read this book day and night. Amen? We should never take this book for granted. Amen? You know, we need to praise the Lord that we, there was Christians that was willing to fight for this book. Because what we have, what's, what you're holding in your hands right now, we have the King James Bible. We have the inspired, infallible, inerrant word of God. Amen. That is why we need to continue to proclaim and to protect and to preserve the precious word of God. You see, the worst enemy of the Christian faith are professing Christians that do not fight to keep the faith. So church, let us not be like those Christians. Let's not be like them. You know, let's be Christians that's willing to fight, that's willing to contend, that's willing to go out and share the gospel to the world. Amen? In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, this is Apostle Paul speaking. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Let me ask you this. When our course is done in this world, when we stand before God, are you willing to say the same thing? Lord, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I mean, think about that. I mean, whatever we do now, we're going to be held accountable for whatever we do in this world. That's why it's so important that we need to continue to fight for God's word, ready to proclaim, to protect, and to preserve his word. Amen? I mean, you think about your life. Your life is so short. You know, when we die and they put that headstone on, 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 you know, you see your headstone there. All you're going to see is just two dates and then that dash in the middle. That is your life. That's it. It doesn't matter if you live up, you know, to 22, to age 62, to 92 or 102. It doesn't matter. That's just your life right there, that little dash. And God is going to look at that dash and say, what did you do for me? Did you keep my word? Did you fight for the truth? Did you fight for the faith? So church, I challenge you tonight, let's not, be, let's not be spectators, amen? Let's just not watch everything going around us and watch the people going, dying and going to hell. You know, let's participate. You know, let's get involved in the church. You know, let's get involved with the soul winning in the ministry. You know, maybe God is speaking to you tonight. Maybe God wants you to go in the ministry, uh, uh, become a pastor or, 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 or maybe be a missionary, amen? Because there are a lot of people out there that's dying and going to hell. And we need missionaries that need to go out and contend. For the faith. So church, let's be a church that's willing to take a stand, that is willing to earnestly contend for the faith. Amen. Every head, every eyes closed, every head bowed. She will always stand, please, and have our heads bowed and eyes closed, appreciated message. I was just thinking when I was listening to him, you know, God has sent already three missionaries to our church. There must be a reason why. Maybe not just to prepare ourselves for our upcoming missions conference to help us be aware of our responsibility. I also asked the same question to God. God, you know that we have a building program coming up. We'll be spending a lot of money to build that building. How can we then? How can then? How can we then afford to support more missionaries? Then I realize that it's not the issue. That it's not a problem. I believe if we support more missionaries, you know, you we, this church has been so generous. We're supporting our own IABC congregations all over the world. We're supporting other missionaries. But somehow the Lord continues to tell us, take in more missionaries. Support more because it's the only way 
God's blessing to be upon us. Maybe you're here tonight, you have not really started supporting missions yet. Maybe you're giving, you're, you're, you're returning your tithes to God, you're giving an offering, but you have not really supported the mission, a, a missionary yet. Well, this is your opportunity. I do not take mission support or supporting missionaries to be a problem that can hinder our building program. I believe that will be the way for greater victory and greater success. I believe when we support mission, world mission more, God is going to provide our needs. Because more, the more we are willing to give to others, the more we are willing to give to God, back to God. Maybe you're here, you, you're, here, you're here tonight and you're not supporting yet. Maybe tonight you will make a commitment. Lord, I'm going to support missions beginning today. I don't have anything to give, but, you, but I know you're going to use my life to be a channel that I can be able to give, that I can be able to give because of you. Young people, children, have you not, even how much you can give, give the mission. Because when you give to God, God will bless us more. That is the way to receive blessings from God. Yes, we're raising half a million dollars to build a building that can seat about 400 people in this property. Yes, we're praying that hope that we do not need to, we would not need to go to the bank and borrow money we can be able to raise the money through this church, through our giving, through our first fruits, through our sacrificial giving. But the first thing we've got to do is to give ourselves to God. Give ourselves to God. If God has spoken to your heart tonight, maybe God is talking to you regarding world mission. Maybe you're, maybe you're here tonight and God is calling you to be a missionary. God wants you to go to the mission field. God is convicting your heart to serve the Lord. As a pastor, serve the Lord as a missionary or an evangelist. Maybe tonight you would like to just come and tell God, God, here am I, send me. This is your opportunity. I know all of us here are believers in Christ. But if God is talking to your hearts in the area of giving yourself, in the area of giving your substance, in the area of supporting missions, in the area of sacrificing to give towards our building program, in the area of just giving yourself to God, then do it now. If God has spoken to your hearts, why don't you come to the altar and kneel before God right now and tell God, use me, O Lord. Use me as a blessing. Why don't you do that? Would you come to the altar? Would you come and give your life to God? Anybody else? Amen. Would you come? Get out of where you are right now and come. Maybe you want to pray for this missionary. Lord, use me to pray for this missionary. Why don't you come? Well, kneel where you are and pray. Anybody else? Just pray. You can kneel where you are and pray. Lord, I pray for this missionary who wants to go to Cebu. I pray that I will begin to give the mission. I pray that through me, I will bless a missionary. Our Heavenly Father, again, oh God, thank you for another missionary, oh Lord, that you brought to our church. I've been asking, oh Lord, for this is now the third time you've sent someone here to us. Oh God, you have a message for us. You have a message, oh Lord, that you are giving us this opportunity, oh Lord, to be a blessing. Not only to missionaries, but to be a blessing to you, to give the blessings back to you. 
We know, oh God, that you know that we have a big need. We need, we need resources. We need money, oh God, to build up our building in the coming two years as soon as possible. I need you, O oh God, to speak to the hearts of each one. Our members, our leaders, for them, O oh God, to give sacrificially, for them to give their first fruit giving, O oh Lord, for them, O oh God, to give towards building and to give towards mission, O oh God. I know, O oh Lord, we can never outgive you. Thank you, O oh God, for the missionaries who are willing to go and reach the whole, the whole world with your gospel. That you just help them, O oh God, in raising their, their support. Sustain them, O oh God, with your grace. Bring them, O oh Lord, take them to churches and take them to the people, O oh God, who are willing to support them, O oh Lord, as they go to the mission field. Again, I pray, O oh God, for our coming up, upcoming missions conference. I know, O oh God, you bring awareness into our hearts, O oh Lord, through these messages, O oh God, about our responsibility. Our responsibility is to be a blessing and to others. And we just commit, O oh God, all these missionaries, O oh God, that you came, that you allowed to come to us, especially our missionary tonight, O oh Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Christ's name we ask all these things. Amen. Thank you. And please be seated. I'd like to ask our ushers to please come as we receive our second offering. Amen. Praise God. Thank you very much, Missionary Dave. Amen. Okay. Praise God for that. If you have not yet given your tithes and offering, okay, uh, as we uh, uh, pass the offering plate, please give generously. Okay. Uh, give your second giving. And at the same time, uh, be a blessing to this missionary and his family. I like this guy. Amen. I like, I like to see Filipinos going back to our native country Amen. and to reach that place with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, we cannot be so uh, arrogant to say, well, you know, the Filipinos are sending out missionaries that they don't, that the Filipinos don't need missionaries anymore. Oh, yes, they still do need missionaries. I remember when I went, when I, we started our first congregation, IBC congregation in the Philippines, of course, it was a joke coming from another pastor. Hey, pastor, why are you here? Your brothers have churches here in the Philippines. Two of your brothers, they're big churches. Why don't you just stay in the USA and start IBC in the USA? Why, you, why do you have to come to the Philippines to start IBC congregations? But of course, he was just joking. And he said, you know, I really, Pastor, I really appreciate you coming to the Philippines because we need more churches in the Philippines. Churches who love missions. Churches who support missions. Churches who can be able to really preach the word of God. Okay, please go ahead and pass the offering plate. And please give generously. Okay, to bless this missionary. And was, when we bless a missionary, we also bless God back. Amen. And so it is an opportunity. All right. Praise God for that. Okay. So your place is Consolacion Cebu. Wow. Consolacion. Anybody knows where Consolacion? Have anybody here? Uh, has been to Consolacion Cebu. You know, I've been I've been to Cebu City. I've been to Karkar Cebu, right? Karkar Cebu. They call it Kuchi Kuchi Cebu because Karkar Kuchi. So Kuchi Kuchi Cebu. <laughs> okay, and uh, so uh, praise God for that. Again, uh, don't forget it's coming Wednesday. Uh, our midweek services. Okay and our prayer time. And uh, I'd like to make an announcement, uh, Carol Lacandula. We have added you into the Missions Task Force membership. Is that okay? Amen. And what, what, what uh, task force is she assigned, uh, Pritchard June? Huh? Europe. Europe. Okay, so you're a part of, uh, of IBC Europe Task Force. Okay, and who is your leader in IBC Europe? Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, uh, Madame Fatima Vergara will lead the IBC Europe. It will be you, uh, Fatima Vergara. Who else is a part of that? Christian Simeon. Okay? So I encourage all, all our task forces to please meet regularly and uh, try to uh, raise awareness towards supporting our own work. You know, this is one thing we need to understand, folks. 
I believe in supporting missions outside of our ministry. But we have our own ministries, our own children under IBBC. We need to support our own children. Okay? And at the same time, support other missions. And I believe there's no... Uh, there's nothing wrong with adding new missionaries to support. I think if we are going to add missionaries, I suggest to add, to add this missionary here to Cebu. Because we don't, have any, we don't have work in Cebu yet. Okay? So, preacher uh, uh, Jun, if you, can, if you can see there, uh, uh, missionary Dave. I, uh, how do you pronounce your name again? Kabuntala. Okay, Kabuntala. Missionary Kabuntala. All right, so please pray for him. Hey, do you have any questions to Missionary Kabuntala? Uh, do you speak Cebuano? I guess he does. <laughs> Fluently? <laughs> oh, we have how many Cebuanos? We, my wife is Cebuano. How many Cebuanos do we have here? Okay, only my wife. That's my wife, Angie. And she speaks Cebuano. Okay, you speak Tagalog? Kuntila. <laughs> You know what? You will be embarrassed when you talk about the Sims. He speaks fluent Tagalog here. You know, but the Sims teach him Tagalog before he goes to Cebu, okay? <laughs> okay, any questions? <laughs> any, any, any questions to our missionary tonight? Yes. Oh, no, no, that's from uh, Davao. Kibuloi is from Davao. N Davao. Now, uh, just a few announcements before we're dismissed. Please pray. Uh, on the last week of September on the 28th of this month, right? It's 28th, right? Yeah. Uh, Pitcher Ben? 28th of this month is going to be our uh, College and Career Sunday. And we have a new name for our College and Career. ASAF. A-S-A-P-H. ASAF. ASAF for the Filipinos. ASAF for the Americans. Okay. ASAF. Okay. It means, it's actually a, uh, an acronym. It means anointed students and professionals for Hosanna. Like that? ASAF, anointed students and professionals for Hosanna. We would like to really mobilize our uh, students and professionals. Now, again, this group will include all singles, all singles, until 100 years old. <laughs> if you're single, if you're not married, you're a professional, you have a job, you're a college student, you belong to this group. It's going to be an exciting opportunity this year because we're mobilizing you guys. You know, just like in the Philippines, I was sharing with them when I had a meeting with, uh, with Preacher uh, Ben and also Preacher John Mark in the Philippines. I remember when we started Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church, more than half of our members were actually young people, college students and high school students. Same thing with Pastor Ben Abante, young people, college and high school students. But they realize those people who were high schools and in college during their time now are the professionals and are now are the supporters of the churches. God is using them now. Not only to support by serving the Lord in the churches, but also to, to uh, uh, support financially the ministry. That's what I want to see, you know, with this group. In order to leave a kind of legacy, you know, if you're going to look at the story of Asaph in the Old Testament, you will actually uh, read a lot more about the sons of Asaph. Okay, a few verses about Asaph, <clears throat> who actually served the Lord uh, with, in the Ark of the Covenant, uh, but, but the sons of Asaph, you know, have, been, have, have, have actually been trained to also serve God. And the one thing I want to see among, among, among this group is, is as you proceed into a married life, you know, you, you leave a legacy of faithfulness. You leave a legacy of putting God first in your life. That's what I want. And we're going to empower you by the grace of God to be able to, uh, to, to teach you, you know, how to use uh, your resources for the God's glory 
Use your body for the glory of God, okay? How many singles do we have here? College and singles. Singles, college, and professionals. R please stand. Come on. Singles, college, and professionals, please stand. Come on. Even 100 years old, you're welcome. There you go. Anybody else? We have a lot more. Okay, the back. Okay. How about, how about uh, married but no children yet? Married and no children. We can also. Come on. All right. There you go. Fatima. <laughs> she is single. Thank you very much. We have a lot more. We have a lot more. If, I think, I think if, you, if you want. Have you, have you ever counted, tried to uh, get estimated how many? I think you should be around 30 or 40. Okay. Okay. We have a lot more. Yes. All right. So let's pray. Uh, the last Sunday of this month, they will be in charge. And of course, I'll be preaching, but they'll be in charge. And... Uh, uh, they're going to be sharing with us, with, with us the programs and activities uh, this, this coming year. So, so please pray. Uh, the one who's leading our ASAP ministry is the preacher Ben Pearson. Would you please stand, preacher Ben? There you go. Okay, there you go. And the one, and, and, and the one who, is actually, who is actually helping him is uh, preacher John Mark there. Peter John Mark was the one who actually led uh, Preacher Ben to our church. So it's wonderful to see these people working together now for the last two years. Preacher John Mark brought Ben to the church. Okay. In fact, he was telling me the story how he was brought to the church. What, what did you say? You know, he, he, you know, he what? He, he, and he annoyed Ben to come to church. <laughs> Would text Ben regularly, come to church, come to church. Until he came, he attended our camp. Now he's faithfully serving with us here. Amen. 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 So exciting. All right. And so uh, look forward to that. And also, uh, I'll be announcing also, we're going to, you know, we have soul winners. I believe last Saturday we had how many people who went out? In the main congregation, we have 18 people who went out for soul winning. That's not counting the rest of our, our, our outreaches also. I think if you're going to call, if you're going to also count other outreaches, you probably have around 30 going out on soul winning on Saturday morning. And praise God for that. What I want to also start here in our church beginning this year is a spiritually, a spiritual caregivers. What are the spiritual caregivers? A spiritual caregivers are people who, would, who are willing to visit the hospitals, visit the sick, visit the discouraged, okay? Visit those who are in need, okay? So I, am, I, am, I, I would like to get people who are willing to do that, okay? Uh, because this is also a needed ministry, uh, the senior pastors are the ones doing this. Pastor Julius, Pastor Francis, and myself, do we do visitation? But I would like to also share this ministry with some of our people. Uh, spiritually caregivers for the Lord. Okay? Uh, this is different from soul winning and soul winning. You knock on doors, you go to, uh, uh, to uh, cold uh, prospects, you go to the streets and knock on doors. But spiritual caregivers, you go to people that we know who are sick. Yeah, okay? Yes? Men and women. Okay, if you, want, if you would like. How many of you would like to be a part of this ministry before you organize this? Amen. One, two, three, four. Anybody else? Five. Okay. Six. It's spiritual caregivers. Amen. We need that. Okay. Seven. Amen. Praise God for that. And of course, I want to expect our preachers to also be a part of this. Okay. So we have two mission ministries. Saturday and Soul Winners uh, ministries in the morning. Uh, starting. You begin at what, at what time, Peter Roland? On Saturday? 9.30 is our Bible study for God and soul winning until about noontime. If spiritual caregivers will probably do it some other night. Okay, either, either Friday night or, or, or Thursday evening. Okay, and we're going to have prospects available that you need to visit. Just like we had a member, I think uh, uh, Matthew visited somebody, one of our members of the church who are now undergoing three dialysis every week. You know, dialysis is a very expensive procedure. Not only expensive, but also it, it's a very painful procedure. You know, I, three times a week, dialysis. I know about one time a week, but three times a week, dialysis. Okay? The same thing also, we have Chinky here. It was, she was in the hospital. You know, I was gone out. You know, I mean, you know, I, I, I would love to have somebody visit her in the hospital. We need a lot of people who can do that, just to visit. Okay? And praise God, a chinky is back here with us. Amen, chinky. Would you please stand, chinky? Okay, chinky. There you go. Yeah, please continue to pray for her. 
We pray for her, okay? And she's still not 100% uh, well. So I need this. If you're willing to be a part of this spiritual caregiver's ministry uh, with the six people here, I would like you to just spend one night or one day a week in your own time. We're going to have, we're going to set our own time to do this together as we go out. But if you cannot join us in this particular time, then you can, we, you, we can give you a prospect, okay, for you to go. And then, and then what you can do, I will also be training you, okay, to be, how to be a spiritual caregiver, able to give comfort and to pray. All right? I'll be announcing that more. Amen? Okay, so these are the three things we're going to be uh, we're, we're, we're going to start. Soul winners, we have that. It's real caregivers and also our ASAF ministry. And you know what? Praise God for our, you know, uh, this violinist, I praise God for you three. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Lighthouse Valley Baptist Church began five years ago. I think five years ago. With only two violinists. Now they have almost 25. Metropolitan started with three. Now they had almost 30 in their orchestra. We just started this year with three. Who knows, maybe in five years we're going to have 20. I would, like, I would like to encourage you guys, if you can learn violin, violin, cello, take lessons. Okay? We would like, we would like especially when we, when we have our, 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 our brand new building, we're going to have a place there for our orchestra and place there for the choir. Amen. This is our architect in, engineer here, an architect. So he's, I, I told you know. Have you have you already drawn? Yes. Okay. Amen. A shell. A warehouse. Okay. Well, I'll give you the free, you know, have the freedom to, to design. Okay, you are the engineer and the architect, and, and he is going to be working with Toby Gonzalez, our architect from Virginia. Oh, you did already? Okay. Amen. Amen, amen. Because I told him to design. You know, one, this is one thing I want to share this with you. I spoke with our architect in Virginia. Remember, he's one of our preachers in IBBC, Virginia. Beach, not in Northern with uh, Tumang. Virginia Beach with Pastor Paines. And I told, I told him, why don't you design a prototype building for, our, for all IBC congregations? So that, you know, we will have our own distinct design. Okay, we're going to have the same design on all IVBC. So therefore, when you see this building, it is an IVBC. And he's going to do that, okay? And he'll be sharing that. Maybe we will start that in the main congregation. And then when we have a building, a buildings in our other congregation, they will also have the same design. So please pray for that. Okay, present it here. All right. And so we need initially, I think if, uh, but we still, we're still going to use the uh, steel frame, right? Okay, steel frame, we are, will be spending uh, initially about $100,000, right? $100,000. So we need to raise $100,000 for steel building. Now look, I just want to challenge you. If, you. if all of us give our first fruits, first fruit giving is a scriptural way of giving. It is giving, you know, uh, Whatever the, 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 the first, the, the main thing that we get from the Lord, give it to the Lord first. Our first fruit is a one-time giving, and it's an annual giving equivalent to one month's income. If you're, if you're earning with $4,000 a month, your first fruit annually will be $4,000. And I would like you to set aside the same amount as to your uh, one-month salary and give the, that as your first fruit gift, beginning this time and then we will we will when you give it you can give it now and we'll set it aside okay we're not going to use that because that's towards our building if for example just conservatively you have 10 people for example 
you know, receiving $4,000 a month. That means four times 10 is $40,000 already. If you have 20 people, that's $80,000 already. If you, have, if you have 40 people giving first fruits, that's $120,000. With 40 first people giving their first fruits, we, 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 we would have raised the initial money we need to build our building program, right? We do not need to go to the bank and borrow money from the bank. As much as possible, we want to avoid getting money from the bank. All right? We would like to, we would like to, uh, we don't want to, in, to, to put our, our church indebted, okay, for life. So I would like, I challenge you. You give it to the Lord sacrificially, whatever. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, if, if you cannot give a first, if you don't have an income, you don't need to give your first, but you can give sacrificially. But whatever amount you can give on top of your tithes, please give that. And also give to mission. Because in order for you to be able to give the mission, and uh, you, in order for you to give your first foot, give the mission. Because when you give the mission, God will bless you more. And we can never outgive God. Amen? I challenge you. Give your first fruits. Amen? Amen. Okay? One, you give it to one month's income. I know it's not going to be easy. But we have a great God. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthened me? God will enable us to give. Amen? I know that this uh, uh, financial problem has actually affected our giving in the church. But, but again, we, we, do things not, we, we do things not based on our, on our affordability because we can't afford anything. It's only by the grace of God we can make it. It's only by the grace of God we can build this building. It's only by the grace of God we can be able to start many congregations all over the world. It's only by the grace of God we can be able to sustain, the, uh, that we can sustain our ministry here. It's only by the grace of God we, can, we, we live every day. And, and we need to bless God back with our lives, with our resources. And in fact, some of those, one of those, those you know, uh, I just want to share with you because I'm also starting my own nest in order for me to give more, more to our building program and, and missions, okay? How many of you, how many of you uh, know the Asai? We call this Akai Berry, right? Akai Berry. Asai Berry, my, my cousin, is the distributor of Asai Berry in the U.S., okay? And I'm selling that every bottle I sell, I give $5 to our church, okay? So if you can be able to, uh, uh, to, to buy that, if you eat, you know, instead of ordering it from outside there, from the, uh, you know, from, from Costco, whatever, okay, just, just get it from me. Because every $5 will be donated to our building program. All right. Asai berry. Akai berry. Uh, Dr. As mentioned that as the super fruit. Super food. Okay. It's now being used a lot. Okay. All right. Something else. So, Carol, you, you'll be a part of the European. Uh, Dr. Christian Simeon has been assigned to what? Uh, the same also. And who else? Alex. Josephat is assigned to what? Uh, Asian? Asian. Okay. On, Ju on November 2nd is our International Sunday. So think of what attire you will be wearing. It has to be international attire. All right? November 2nd. That will be our Mission Sunday, our interest. Let's all now stand, please, as we sing our, our last song. Please shake hands with our guests tonight. All together now, from the Bible we read, Jesus Christ, as he led, he had gathered us who he saved. Proclaim the great word he had called them to take up his cause. We're a church with a great heart for souls, set apart to reach the untold. Let's go out to the Lord and bring them to the cross. We're a church with a great heart for souls.
again we're a church with a great heart for souls set apart to reach the untold let's go out to the lost and bring them to the cross we're a church with a great heart for souls let me ask uh, preacher june laxina please dismiss us to the word of prayer